Hello and welcome to the virtual lecture for Riding the Iron Rooster by Paul Theroux. I should have added Riding the Iron Rooster by Train Through China by Paul Theroux, I should have actually said. Uh, so we'll make a start and we'll analyse this one. Obviously, again, um, it's from the Voices Anthology, as all of these are. And uh, first of all, I'm just going to basically go through the article um, and pick out some interesting features it's not necessarily going to be everything but it's a few things as i notice them and then of course it's going to be comparing it with whatever's going to be coming up so um as this is like the travel log basically we're looking really at travel writing and you'll see straight away if we turn on the lightsaber there we go we've got um we came to paris first person plural pronoun there and of course first person you would expect that to be the case for uh, travel writing of this kind. So obviously it's an individual's uh, experiences and it's based on that. Secondly, again, still sounding fairly obvious, but again, it doesn't necessarily seem as obvious when you're actually linking this to other features as well. Of course, you've got a proper noun there for Paris. Um, of course, you need to make it clear about where it is you're actually talking about. Then we have, we have we were met by a bus and brought to a hotel, uh, met by a bus, passive voice, again, you could even add personification in that in some ways as well, and also familiar collocation, as it is a familiar phrase that uh, we encounter quite a lot, and again, hotel words, or Lexis would sound better actually, that um, is associated with um, travel writing, so, you know, staying in a hotel normally, when you visit places so we have um, also standing out on this section as well, and excuse the French pronunciation, but arrondissement there. So you're going to get kind of French nouns there as part of this. Notice as well, you've also got a noun phrase there of the metro line. Uh, if I'm talking too fast on this, feel free to pause it and rewind it and whatever you need to do. Then we have, uh, what else have we got? Uh, let's have a look. So we've got Chicago, South Boston as well. So in terms of like voice, thinking of this in terms of it's written from the perspective of an American visiting, uh, visiting Paris. So in terms of what that person is relating it to, what Paul Theroux in this case is relating it to, he's relating it to places that he's experienced with in America in itself. So there is that for you then. Then notice that there's uh, connotations here of grey. Grey is kind of boring connotations as well. Um, I don't think there's any real significance in the fact that it's the British spelling of grey as opposed to the American spelling of grey with an A as well. I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's probably just an editing thing where it's been changed to the British spelling. But grey obviously has got connotations. If you explore the connotations of a word, you've got grey there. It's got boring connotations to it. Um, and it's also talking about these post-war blocks of flats um, as a pre-modifier there, post-war and blocks of flats sounding kind of boring as well, but post-war kind of contextualises it. And, of course, to American readers, Americans hadn't experienced the kind of direct kind of devastation that uh, Europe had experienced in the Second World War. So this is, again, contextualising that. Then, uh, yeah, there were too many. There were too many of them, and they were too close together. So there is an element here of uh, yeah. There's a bit of parallel phrasing there. There were too many of them. They were too close together. It's a bit of parallel phrasing there. And people said, "Is this Paris? Is this France? Where's the Eiffel Tower?" So we've got this um, kind of reported speech here. It's kind of indirect speech of the kind of things that other tourists in the uh, on the trip with Paul Theroux would say. So again, it's giving an impression, and again, it's all from an American kind of perspective as kind of outsiders. So we have um, uh, the Centre of Paris is a masterpiece of pre preservation. So hyperbolic there. Use a bit of hyperbole there. Uh, but the suburbs such as this one are simple and awful. So there's um, there's a... There's a bit of a juxtaposition there between masterpiece of preservation and it being simple and awful as well. Uh, yeah, we could even push it into antithesis. Masterpiece, simple and awful. You know, there's an idea of an antithetical contrast then. Uh, there is also a lexical set 
um, kind of buried in this of artistry as well. So look out for that as you're looking at any other aspects of this too. Um, then um, some of this one is simple enough. The brutal pavements and high windows of Saint Jacques seem designed to encourage suicides. So it's kind of darkly humorous piece of hyperbole there as well uh, for that section. So on to the second section, and uh, we'll have another look at this bit. So, get the old lightsaber. And we've got, uh, funnily enough, more, kind of more indirect speech here. Again, it's the kind of thing that would have been said on the trip by other people. He's not attributing it to any particular other tourist, but it's giving you an impression of the kind of things that would have been said on the trip itself. Uh, there's a cultural reference here of Samuel Beckett, who is a famous American playwright. And Samuel, Samuel Beckett lived in one of those blocks of flats and indeed had been in it for years. Then uh, this, that was where he wrote his stories and plays about the sheer pointlessness and utter misery of human existence. So again, this is part of a um, uh, cultural reference. Uh, again, linked to Samuel Beckett's work and the kind of his plays and what they would be like. I thought, no wonder... Um, I was told you often came over. I was told that you often came over to our hotel, the Hotel Saint Jacques, to have a morning coffee. So you've got a kind of lexical set here of depression, really, haven't you? You've got um, yeah, sheer pointlessness, utter misery, human existence. We had there was suicide mentioned before, um, so that all connects together quite nicely. Bit of um, familiar collocation here. Hotel's a newish, spick and span place. So spick and span. I'd say newish. This um, use of suffixing here uh, creates an informal effect, a colloquial effect there. I so think that makes the voice, it seems a bit more like it's being you're being spoken to. You know, this is a piece of writing. It is a bit like you're being spoken to. Um, so um, spick, and, yeah, spick and span place that resemble the lonely hotels bit of personification, lonely hotels that are found just outside American airports. Again, a cultural reference. Uh, again, the um, uh, we're familiar to his kind of primary audience. Now, people stay because there is nowhere else. Beckett came here for pleasure. Rhetorical question, as I'm sure you already realised. Uh, I walked the streets. I lurked in the coffee shop. An interesting choice of verb. I lurked, I lurked in the coffee shop. It's an unusual choice of verb, isn't it? And so the voice, again, it's got this, um, this, this atmosphere of kind of being kind of depressed. It's dark, it's grey, it's boring, it's uninspirational and lurking. It doesn't sound as, um, you know, it doesn't sound particularly glamorous. I lurked in the coffee shop. I prayed for him to appear, but nothing. She's still thinking of Samuel Beckett here. It was a lesson, though. When people read Samuel Beckett Lives in Exile in Paris, they did not know that it meant to be a pokey little flat on the fifth floor of number 32. So you've got a um, pokey little flat. In many ways, that's a little bit of pleonasm there, which is, pleonasm is like a really, um, it's like a um, very small kind of tautology, like pokey and little. It's really emphasising, it's like saying tiny little child, it's that kind of idea. Pokey little flat, it's emphasising how small and pokey it is and it's not something luxurious and it's not glamorous. So this is what Samuel Beckett's kind of talking about, he's saying the cultural reference of, oh, you're thinking of this famous playwright who is living in Paris and there's a lot of glamour to Americans thinking about that. Um, but the reality is very different, it's a very boring environment. Fifth floor of number 32... A tall grey, another repetition of grey, but in which resonance waited for God over watching television. This, again, is another cultural reference, and it's um, referring to one of Samuel Beckett's most famous plays as well. Front of conjunction, which is always a, always a sign of a text edging more towards the informal as well, so we've got that as evidence there. Uh, and it was 17 stops on the metro from the centre of Paris, the left bank, the museums. There is a very small lexical set here, Paris, left bank, museums, of the cultural uh, features of Paris. And the metro, I mean, 17 stops out obviously means that it's a long way, it's a long way out from those exciting, glamorous places. Sorry, I'm moving the lights around too much. There. So on to the next section, into the third paragraph. 
We've got again wet black morning. We've got connotations here of depression. You know, it's rainy. It's uh, you know black. It's dark. It was a wet black morning in Paris. The street sweepers and milkmen doing their solitary rounds. Solitary again as a pre modifier here, as a pre modifying adjective even. Solitary. You've got uh, again connotations of loneliness, depression. It's again you can you build up this picture of what Paul Theroux is trying to say about Paris here. Uh, by the light of street lamps, and just as dawn broke over the eaves and chimney pots, we plodded out of the Gare de l'Est. Plodded is the thing I focus on there. The verb, dynamic verb, again connotations of uh, yeah, of depression, of being miserable. And you compare a verb like that, plodded, compared to like skipped. You know, we skipped out of the Gare de l'Est. It's, you know, you compare the verb choice there. You can see what Theroux is going for. So we have, I thought we left the suburbs behind in the Rue Saint-Jacques, but there were more, and they were deeper and grimmer. These are comparatives here, deeper and grimmer. Again, the connotations, deeper and grimmer, so it's even worse than it's seen before. The people in the group, with their faces at the windows of the train, were shocked and disillusioned. So, stative verbs here, shocked, disillusioned, stative verbs again. You can see all of this is adding up this picture of Paris isn't what I expected. It's depressing. It's miserable. You know, we plod around. It's grey. It's dark. It's all building up. This is what the voice is. It's of someone coming in. This place is. This place is basically living down to my expectations. It wasn't gay Paris. It wasn't even Cleveland. There is. Right, a couple of things to say on here. Cleveland is, for Americans, is a cultural reference of it's associated with being boring and uneventful and not very exciting place. So what we've got here is, this is actually like incrementum. It wasn't gay Paris. It wasn't even Cleveland. Gay Paris, familiar collocation as well. The connotations of, you know, things like the Moulin Rouge and uh, artists and, uh, you know, and writers and the glamour of Paris. But it wasn't gay Paris. It wasn't even Cleveland, so a bit of incrementum there, build up saying, no, it's really boring, it wasn't even that. You know, This is how depressing and unimpressive it actually is. The Americans looked very closely. We were unused to this. We put up suburbs too quickly and cheaply for them to wear well. We expect them to decline and collapse and be replaced. There's a sense of incrementum there, time isn't decline, collapse, replaced. There's a sense of time moving on there, or at least a chronological sequence maybe is more accurate to say rather than incrementum. Then uh, they weren't built to last and they look temporary because they are temporary. So a bit of parallel phrasing, they look temporary because they are temporary. But French suburbs, so again French conjunction, villas, terraced houses and blocks of, fl of flats, we've got a three-part list there. We've got this. Uh, we've got this actual use of parentheses here as well with these dashes. Are solid and fairly ugly, and their most horrific aspect is that they look as though they will last forever. So hyperbolic as well, more hyperbole. It had been the same in outer London. How could houses so old look so awful? Parallel phrasing, and you've um, also got another rhetorical sentence there. So that is that article. Things it could go with. Uh, other examples of travel writing, uh, anything where there's maybe a description of Paris, could be something where there's a description of Paris, either a fictional description of Paris, or um, it could be another piece of travel writing describing Paris, um, or something like that. So anyway, that was the, that's the last, actually, of these lectures. So I hope you've enjoyed them. You can listen to them any time. And like I said, I've tried to cover most of the important things. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And goodbye.